Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to introduce Beta 2 of Ares for the Odroid XU4 today. There's several important features or changes that I've made. The first one is that the ROMs partition is now NTFS. As such, it will work inside of your PC without needing to use SFTP to transfer the files. I've also moved the BIOS folder into ROMs and simply created a symbolic link that will link them together. If you have a OGST case, you can use this menu there. You can update themes from Hursty's themes here. And the rest of these settings, you can use the Odroid config. I'll, let, I'll show you Retro Arch real quick. Odroid config just has some general settings and uh, quality of life features. As you can see, RetroArch is 1.10.2. It's the latest version currently available. Give you a quick scroll through some of the systems. I'll stop here and load Dolphin Blue. There's always going to be a couple of games that don't work properly or that are laggy, but the, the, gen the general um, majority work reasonably well. Like here in Dolphin Blue, you'll hear a little bit of crackling in the menu, but as soon as it gets into the game, it goes away again. So as you can hear, everything's fine. Nintendo 64 is the same way. You get a different experience depending on the core that you choose. One core has better graphics, but you get some audio crackle and some audio issues. And the other core, the graphics aren't as good, but you won't have very many issues with the audio. Personally, I'd go for playing at a lower resolution and have a better gameplay experience. Especially because the N64 didn't really ever look great in the first place. Cody works, but currently the controller is being a bit buggy, so I advise that you use a keyboard with it. Ah, here's what I'm talking about. I'll just show you what I mean. It's probably easier if I just give you a visual as to the idea. So if you use Next, it has better graphics, but the audio can be problematic in some games. You'll hear some crackles. And if you use this one here, then it's, it's smooth sailing, but the graphic quality is not quite as good. I'll just show you what I mean. For the person that asked before, this here on my hat is a football team from the Canadian Football League called the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And that's a hockey tooth. As you can see though, it works okay. There's no crackling audio. There's no real serious issues or bugs when you're using this particular core. You can use standalone too. It does work as well but I prefer to just use this core here. The RetroArch menu itself is a very powerful tool, and the XU4 is not particularly weak in the CPU department. Where's that ground pound? Boom, there it is. Okay, we're good. Saturn works good on this as well. Uh, I'm not going to bother with Naomi or Dreamcast because I already played Atmos Wave and they all use the same core. I will probably do some Saturn, maybe some PSP. Give you a quick look at the ports so you get an idea of what's in here. In terms of the ports, the 
Retro command or run command will install the generic or basic folder structure for you, but it's not going to give you the game files. You have to actually have the game and or provide your own game files. We're not going to give them to you because that would be copyright infringement and we don't do that. This light here is really bothering me. You can't see it because it's literally right behind the camera, but it's shining right in my face. I'm probably not going to actually play this game, but you can hear from the sound that it's, it's not lagging, it's not choppy. If you were to play God of War or something like that, God of War would definitely be laggy, but that's to be expected on this hardware. I'll also be working on the N2 and the H2 as well. And I've released an update for the Odroid Go Advanced and Super. It's almost bedtime. So here's Saturn, we'll play Bomberman. You'll be able to see that the gameplay is reasonable, it's not super laggy, there's not audio tearing or uh, clipping, anything like that. Also, let me know what you guys think of the green screen effect behind me here. This is using the standalone Yaba Sanshiro and not the Libretro core just because it works better. You'll be able to hear the difference in audio for SNES CD. Finish giving you a look through the systems. And we're back to where we started. If you go into the Retro Arena setup stuff here, uh, under Lib, uh, actually, sorry, under Standalone, we've got MAME installed here. And I've been using MAME on a lot of other devices uh, to get things running like Tiger GameCom, Game Pocket Computer. And for devices that have keyboards, we can do Dragon 32 and Color Computer and all, all kinds of interesting systems like that. So that's where my next area of focus is going to be. <clears throat> I'm going to really try to get some more of the more obscure and harder to emulate systems that not many people know about on this particular device and on the N2 as well. 
but uh, that's that's where my focus is going to be. As well as bug fixing, obviously. Feel free to report bugs, and we'll fix them as they come up and as we can do releases. I also have plans to add an over-the-air updater, so you don't have to reflash when I make changes outside the scope of run command. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video.